This is the brand new facade mount for the Archway LiDAR Scanner. Now we can scan objects forward. Today we're scanning this bridge here behind me. I'm going to show you how it works. Let's fly. In this video, I'm debuting the brand new facade mount for the R2A LiDAR from my company, Rock Robotic. This mount allows you to go from one configuration, which is in nadir mode, pointing straight down for mapping, rotate it by 90 degrees to start mapping the sides of objects or the facades of objects. And this could be the sides of buildings, it could be the sides of cliffs, and today we're doing the side of this bridge here behind me. Now, it's actually really quick and easy to go from facade mount, take it right off, now you have the LiDAR, you can put it on the sky port in the drone, do nadir mode. This is actually exactly what we're gonna do today. We're gonna fly above this bridge behind me, get from the top down, and then we're gonna pop on the facade mount. Boom. And mount it and start flying front, scanning the side of the object. Let's talk a little bit more about this bridge. So the mission today is to map this bridge behind me. This is a steel lattice structure bridge and it spans a thousand feet and it's 172 feet high at the tallest point. Now, what we're thinking is about using the R2A and flying in nadir mode first to cover the top, flying down and back so we can get both sides of these tracks in really high detail, and then popping on the facade mount and doing the side scan to capture the side detail of all the support structures. But let's go take a little bit closer look at the actual lattice work so you get a good idea what it looks like in real life before we fly it and look at the data later. All right, now we're down here at the foot of the structure and here we can see all of the detail, these rivets, we got these cross beams here, and a lot of lattice work that's holding this whole structure together. It's very big. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a challenge to map this and get all the good data, data that we need. Let's go up to Matt and start talking to him about some mission planning and how we're gonna tackle this job. Hey Matt, just got done showing these guys a close-up of the bridge. Okay. I wanna talk to you a little bit about how you're thinking we're gonna fly this thing. Uh, well. We got a couple things we got to do. We're going to fly nadir over the top, down and back, down and back, get everything covered that way. That's also going to cover the tracks as well as the ground. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and fly sideways along, up and down, you know, one elevation, drop down another elevation, drop down another elevation, uh, and get it from both sides with the front forward facing R2A facade mount. Okay. So, sounds like a great idea. It's going to be cool. What do you think? So, it looks like there's some tight spots, some trees, and we got some visual observers. What do you think if I follow it with the with the Mavic? This guy I already got it for you. There you oh, go. Nice. So, okay. so I'll fly gonna, the Mavic. Yeah, you're gonna chase me with that. You're gonna keep eyes on me with that. And then we have a VO that's watching us as well. And yeah, we're gonna get nice and tight in some spots because it is rather tight on the on the on the ends. But then we get a pull away and get a nice little scan from uh, from a further distance where it opens up in the middle. Awesome. I think that sounds like a great idea, man. Yep. And then the only other thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna do a drop and pivot, you know, because the LiDAR scan is actually vertical like this now. Yeah. Instead of down at the ground, it's like this. So we're actually gonna do a yaw scan and Smart. get it that way. So we'll drop, do a little yaw scan, drop, do a little yaw scan in those spots where we can't really fly sideways because there's trees or vegetation or scary stuff. Yeah, no, I think that, that sounds like a solid plan. Okay. Why don't we just go ahead and uh, send it? Let's get it done. <laughs> Let's get it done. All right. Let's fly. <laughs> All right, well, we just finished flying all the missions for the day. Now let's go back to the office, look at that data. It's gonna look awesome. Now, welcome back to the office. We just got done flying the new facade mount here on the R2A, and a quick few notes about my experience flying earlier today. It was awesome. It really was very well balanced. It was super simple to go from the nadir mode, which is putting that on the drone, and then popping this back on and going into our facade mode. 
And then also, we actually flew it on top of the M300, mounted just like that, pointed straight up so we can fly underneath the bridge, which is really dope as well. So that was really easy. And then now we're gonna jump into the rock cloud and I'm gonna show and reveal another awesome new thing that we did. And today I'm re releasing it for the first time. And that is our rock cloud 2.0. And what this is, one amazing feature that I'm gonna show you today, which I couldn't even imagine doing, point cloud editing in the cloud. So you're gonna be able to classify manually your data in the cloud. And what we're gonna use that to do today is the fact that we flew the nadir the facade, and looking straight up. So each one of these orientations has a different thing that we wanted to see. We wanted to see the top of that rail in really good detail. We wanted to see the side of all those pillars and structures of lattice work. And then we wanted to look underneath the bridge and get that data. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out all the other data that wasn't the choice data for that particular orientation of the sensor. And what this is gonna do is gonna enable us to clean up the data set and get the best, ugh, data set out of this. So let's go ahead and jump into the Rock Cloud, take a look at those data sets right now, and then we'll start editing some data. Okay, so here we are in the Rock Cloud. I got those five data sets loaded up. I'm gonna click on the compare view and bring them all up in the same visualizer. And we're gonna see all five data sets overlapped on top of each other. So here we are, loaded up, boom. And it looks pretty darn awesome right off the bat. But we got this noise, and this noise is what we're going to classify out. And what this noise actually is, is because when you're in that facade mount mode, this is, it's just like a lens flare, like a regular camera. It's whenever it pointed right into the sun and captured the sun's rays. So you can actually see probably what time of day it is if you calculate the angle of this and figure out where we were sitting and flying. You get a pretty good idea exactly what time I shot this, this uh, bridge. Now, we're looking at in the elevation view. So what I'm going to do is come over here in the quick tools. I'm going to pop in this compare. So now we're actually gonna show the five different data sets in false color. And so you can see all the five there. And I think the most important thing I wanna show you really quick, let's take a quick look at this nadir, the very first flight. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn this into that RGB because this is, this is probably gonna be the most impressive. So this is the RGB from the nadir. It's loading. Gosh, that looks, that looks pretty darn impressive on those railroad ties. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into individually these data sets and go ahead and edit them and remove the noise and some of that overlap from the different data sets. So I'm gonna leave that nadir covering the top surface and then I'm gonna take my facade scan, I'm gonna remove that top surface from that. So that way I got the top from the nadir and the side from the facade and I'm gonna merge those together on the rock cloud to make one final product. But if we can take one quick second to look back at this data set, it just loaded the rest of those points and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty amazed. This looks, this looks awesome. This actually looks a lot better than I was uh, intending and hoping. Cause you know, we flew in the left side and the right sides to kind of get the two sides of these, uh, these rails. And that just looks phenomenal. All right, let's jump into editing. So here I have the facade scan number two. This is the second flight pattern we did during the data acquisition. And we can see all that sun data coming up. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this little pencil icon top right. I'm gonna go ahead and add a new classification. You can see I can click right there. And then I'm gonna select this. And now what I can do is I can just easily expand this box. And we're going to be able to select all these points that we want to be removed. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do this for this one quick selection. You can just see right there. Just selecting that area, see in pink. And we're gonna go uh, scope any, so it's gonna take it from any class. So there's data can be in model classes, and we're gonna send it to this high noise class. So that's where it's gonna go. All I'm gonna do is click save. And now it's applying that classification right now, and this is applying it to the actual LAZ or LES file that I uploaded. So this is gonna be a true classified data set that I'm just doing with a couple clicks of the button. And there we go, the classification been applied. I'm click refresh and we should see that new class showing up right here. There we go, that's it in purple. So there we go, we and I classified that LiDAR data set and then now when we're in that merge view, that's gonna be totally turned off. You can turn that off. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do this for the rest of the data sets and bring it all together and then we're gonna take a look at that final product.
All right, now I just finished editing all those data sets and here we're gonna take our first look at them all combined together. And look at that, that is, that's phenomenal. So, you know, now you can see how it's cleaned up so much before. Here, I can actually go ahead and I can turn on all of the data set with all the noise. And then I can go ahead and turn off all that noise for all of them. And you can see the difference right there. You can see exactly what I did. I was able to clean up all the data sets and merge them into one. So I'm gonna go ahead, all this data is, of course, again, it's shared in the link below. You can see it all, you can play with it. And there you go. That was the Rock Cloud new point cloud editing functionality. And you just saw how I was able to easily combine those five different data sets to get one beautiful looking finalized model out of the Rock R2A with the new facade mount, but also flying in the nadir and also pointed straight up underneath the bridge how we combined all those data sets and using the Rock Cloud and that new functionality really made all this possible. But this tool is gonna to be used for so much more and I'm really excited to be playing around with the ability to just control my data. And I think that right there is the pure essence of what we're doing is you have control over this data and I have so many ideas I wanna do with it and I know you do too. So that's really on the surface level what's so awesome about this and on kind of look underneath the hood, there's a few other things that you know I know that you don't know, but everything that we do now is 90% faster. It is so fast. So whenever we do all the AI and the computer vision on these data sets to get the bare earth and the topos or the power line classification or looking at mobile data, all of this functionality, since we rewrote the very way that LAS and LAZ file format is made to be optimized, this is now so fast and so efficient. So the experience for everyone is gonna be better, but there's so much more to come from this and I'm so excited that this is just the first release in this. But anyways, I can talk about this all day. I'm gonna stop right there because this was a great video and I, I enjoyed making it and I enjoyed showing these tools. As always, I hope you guys like, subscribe and share the video. And as always, I'll see you here next time here on Indiana Drones.